Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, Double Jackpot. We got a late one here on Thursday evening. Thursday night game's over and the Redskins did not get it done for me in this jackpot. They did not cover. They came down and hit a walk-off field goal for the win, but they simply didn't get it done. Uh, disappointed, but nonetheless, we won with the over and we won with the Raging Cajuns. Again, uh, not a bad night. Uh, the little uh, bets that I did have, and like I said, these are less than three and four dollars. They were. Uh, I told y'all earlier I like the over in the field goals, over one and a half. That got it done. So overall, wasn't a bad night. But stay tuned. At the end of this video, I'm going to give you my big Sunday play for the NFL. So stay tuned for that. It'll be at the end of the video. Um, talking about this Christopher Mitchell, um, he goes into this, uh, $10,000 loss. Oh, well, so, you know, he lost 10,000. Uh, he must, people must know about it. He must have released that to some people in the inner circle or whoever might have said, Hey, I want to pay for these picks. So, you know, he probably had to come clean on that, but you know, when you deal with a scammer like this guy is, and he's just he's just a slimy scammer because he 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 he's trying to win your confidence like all scammers and con men. He goes into telling you about how he lost his mother at nine. You know, he's forty two years old, he says. You know, that's thirty two years ago. It you know. His dad was abusive, talks real bad about his dad. Okay, I totally get it. But then he goes on and tells everybody how he's trying to beat the cycle of what his dad did to him. Well, he hops in an old hoopty Camry, drives out to California, does some X-rated videos. That's kind of beating the cycle. Um, then he goes on to do other things. And now he's in the gambling world of trying to be a professional gambler. Hmm. Sounds like you're really, really making a difference in being positive. You know, uh, get a job. You know, you don't have a job. You try to, you, you have suckered people out of their money, you know, by giving them false hopes and dreams. And that's what scammers do. You know, it's not so bad that he's just a, a horrible gambler. It's what scammers do. Listen to me on this. Pay close attention, okay? Pay close attention. Scammers give false hopes, build dreams, and don't care if they're shattered or not. That's the whole part. That's why it's called in term a scam. He's just selling this. He knows down deep it's BS and 99%. It's just like MLM marketing. He knows 99% of the people can't do it, but he's going to sell it anyway. You know? So take it for what it's worth. He... He's going to lure you in with these sad, touchy feelings. Now, maybe some of these foreigners go for it. These people down on their luck. These, these people that just are weak. Weak, weak, weak. And then, then they say, oh, I can do this. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to be like him. I can do this. And, and it's simply not true. This sports gambling is as tough as anything. Before I get talking more about Christopher Mitchell, while this is fresh on my mind... Did y'all see the video tonight? It was a new, it was a new YouTuber, and I watched it. It was probably around seven ish, seven seven ish, and there was only like twenty views. I it said Christopher Mitchell. I'm, I'm trying to give you the best. I don't know who it was. I just I thought I could click back to it later and watch it some other time. It, but there was only like twenty three views. It had him in a tank top in the top hand of the. Uh, thumbnail and it said something like this Christopher Mitchell uncensored playing blackjack I believe it was a new youtuber I've never seen the name um, excuse me if I uh, if it isn't a new youtuber but it looked like somebody fairly new and if you guys have seen that video I, I, I got to watch the majority of it it had him playing live at the blackjack table and, and somebody uh, videoed that session and it had him swearing and cussing and acting a fool and I'm going to tell you some of the things that I did take out of the video 
I'm assuming it was a real video. I didn't get to go watch it the second or third time. I, I watched it one time. I had other things on my mind while I was watching it, but you guys might have seen it. So he's sitting at the table. Uh, you didn't know he's, he's doing a video. Uh, and maybe this is one of his old videos that somebody recopied. I haven't seen it, but the thing was titled Christopher Mitchell Uncensored. And like I said, maybe, just maybe, this was something, somebody might have uh, copied this while they were playing with him, or maybe this was something he did. I don't know. It's the first time I saw the, this video. I'm sorry I sound redundant. I'm just trying to paint the picture for you. So he's, he's playing at the table, and the dealer has like a six, six showing on the blackjack. And Christopher Mitchell with his no bust strategy. So a guy gets two sevens. Christopher Mitchell is like this idiot. He's going to ruin. This is what you call greed. Stupid, stupid. So he splits the sevens and he draws two tens, two uh, face cards. I think it was a king and a jack or two kings. I'm not sure. But anyway, he had, the, the, the guy drew into uh, 17s. Christopher Mitchell's MF in this guy and telling him, telling him how stupid he is and just this is a greedy thing because I think Christopher Mitchell uh, stopped at like a 15 or 14 or 16. I don't know what he had. He was playing third base, I believe, and the guy was in the middle and he's saying, oh, you just took the bus cards. You took the bus cards. Like, you know, we, we want to feel that way when we were playing, with, playing that way, but the, the truth of the matter is you don't know where the cards are coming from. You know, what if those were threes or fours or sevens? You know what I'm saying? And then the tens come out later. So anyways, he's just being a you-know-what. And just it was just watching him play this no-bust strategy, not taking cards. It's kind of like not he'll never play an underdog who's not going to draw a card because he knows he's a mental midget and he's going to bust or he's going to screw up and he, he wants the dealer to draw the card. And, you know, he, does, he doesn't he does believe in basic blackjack strategy. But the session showed him losing his composure. And I can't believe that would be a video that he would post. Maybe it was. But there was a lot of bleeping on it. Even um, when the person in the room came in, they said, Who, why is he swearing so much? I don't know. Like I said, I didn't get to really analyze the video and look at it much. Um, I don't watch a whole lot of his content unless you guys tell me about it. And uh, I try to make a video about it. But it was an interesting video. And I, like I said, I've been looking for it off and on and I haven't found it. So if you guys have seen it, let me know. But we talk about scammers in general. It doesn't matter if it's a, someone coming to, a, to your home or, or trying to sell you a uh, uh, home remodeling, home um, anything to do with your home. It could be sprinkler systems. It could be an air conditioner. It could be everything. They try to win your trust. And I'm not saying this is that all people are like this. I'm just saying scammers, the scamming companies, the people that are unethical and have the fly-by nights. They come in and they try to, especially the seniors and, and people, they, they're trying to automatically win your trust by being nice and being cordial. He, he gets this image going. And you can see how phony and fake he is. That's what blows it for him. He's on a camera. He's not at your doorstep. You know, you're actually able to watch him from your television set. So it just looks so phony and fake. So that's strike one. You know, strike one is he's just, you can see the phony and fakeness. Okay, so then he goes on to, he, he tries to win your trust. Doesn't work. He tries to make it sound so easy. I notice he doesn't use the terms guarantee as much and 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 all these promising things because it's just so crazy and, and so it's just the only word I can come to my head is just stupid. Stupid, 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 you know. You're not gonna win all the time. You're not gonna win. I mean, look, a lot of my subscribers said the the for the the big money was on the Redskins and the over and Louisiana Tech. So, you know, you just don't know who's going to win. You don't know what can happen. That game went back and forth the last three minutes. I mean, you also got to think about the money line. If you bet Washington on the money line, you won. 
if you bet it on the Giants, you know, you had had a had it taken from you at the very end. That game was crazy at the end. It, it, they changed leads two, three times within the last three minutes. That's what I'm saying. If you aren't prepared for this and you're not wired for professional sports, baseball, basketball, basketball is crazy. You really want to bang your head against the wall, watch. It doesn't matter if it's college or um, NBA. I'm going to tell you a, a quick little story I share. I, I went to Vegas just a couple of times with my dad ever. My dad was not a gambler at all. But I guess I turned 21. He took me, him and my mom took me. We stayed at Bally's. This was in the late 80s. Late 80s. You know, my dad wasn't a gambler. I don't think he even stepped foot in a casino or did anything. I think my mom and dad went to some shows. And that's all they did. I never once, once saw him. So I went across the street at the time to Barbary Coast. Right there out in the corner where you got Caesars Palace, Barbary Coast, Bally's. And at that time, it was the dunes, I believe, on the corner there. So, you know, I am just turned 21, and I'm running around playing, trying to find a place that would look like they'd let me play some blackjack and stuff like that. But, um, you know, you're just learning, and you're trying to see the sports books. And my dad and I were walking through Caesars Palace, and it was the Houston Rockets, Portland Trail Blazers. This was probably 1980. 889, I'm thinking. Could have been 87. 87, 88, 89. I, time goes by. And uh, I had the Houston Rockets playing the home team. And I swear to God, uh, people are walking off the court. There's three or four seconds left. And uh, that's when Portland, you know, they had Drexler. I believe Drexler was on that Portland team. I'm sure he was. Anyway, somebody from the Rockets, I don't know who it was. I really don't. Could have been John Lucas or somebody. Threw up a rainbow from half court as they're, I mean, he could have almost been out of bounds walking into the locker room. And he was leaving from the scorer's table. He wasn't like walking behind the backboard. They were leaving from, a, from the side of the court. And it sinks it in. It meant nothing to do with the outcome of the game or, or that, but all the fans. And it counted, and uh, it changed the spread. I just, I never forget that. That's, I think that's my first time I bought a wager, wagering ticket out of casino, and it went from being a loser to a winner. And I remember cashing that ticket. And I think it was like fifteen dollars. I think it was like ten or fifteen bucks. But anyways, it just goes to show you first wager you ever placed, and it was literally. I remember people lining up from Portland going over there to cash their tickets, and. Lo and behold, the Rockets ended up covering. But having said that, that's what you're in for. That's the roller coaster ride in sports betting. That's what you're going to see. So welcome, if you want to welcome yourself to sports betting and welcome to Christopher Mitchell's world, it's, he says, oh, you just, you know, set the bet in there and forget it. It's not that quite easy. If you're really doing it for money, you're going to do live. You're going to, like tonight, tonight's game's a great example uh, you could have won both ways on this game, playing live. You know, it had many opportunities. I didn't do it because it was I was playing so small. I didn't do it, but there was so many opportunities where you could have got Washington minus one, Washington plus two, Washington plus two and a half, the Giants minus uh, plus two and a half. I mean, there was many plus three. Uh, there was many times you could have got some favorable lines and won both sides of this game tonight. Anyways, um, he, he he proceeds to try to win your trust. He tr prays off of the week, so that's strike two. Know that if you're if you're looking and contemplating to do anything with this this uh, slime ball, that's strike two. Okay, we're gonna finish this off with strike three on you know when you're doing these games a chance, whether it's cards playing Baccarat, Blackjack, it doesn't matter. You're not going to win every session. You know how many times, I mean, there's this one guy that I see at the casino all the time when I was going. And the guy is a very successful businessman. I told, told um, the people I was with that this guy just cannot stop playing. He, he'll play till he loses or he'll play till it's time to go or he'll, he'll play till all his chips are gone. 
and he he's gonna you know is he gonna uh, cash another marker and play for more I don't know but I'm just saying I don't know him personally well enough to know his financial status but I just know I always see him lose I never see these but he can't stop and that's what he likes to do I'm not gonna knock him he's a foreigner very successful businessman he's retired I asked him what he was doing one time I was up there he was playing craps and I asked him came up to him and sure enough that's what he likes to do so He's worked his whole life to give his money to the casinos. Um, so that's what I'm trying to say. Some of the, one of the quotes my dad often said to me, you know, when we'd be talking about stuff, I've never seen a rich gambler. Yes, I know you see the guys that are the, the these businessmen that have every, every analytical advantage and they win. They play big money, million dollar stakes, the Bob Stupaks of the world, the wins, the, this one guy on TV, um, on YouTube, he's made millions. That's what he does. He's a very successful businessman. You know, I don't know how these people, these foreigners come into the country and they just somehow, they come in from Japan, China, the Middle East, and they lose their shirt, you know. You, the, these whales come in and they just lose it all. You can see a million YouTube videos. I don't, you know, tons of them. So Christopher Mitchell thinks, Oh, because he has this, that he's this beast unknown all around the world. Come on, people. The guy is just a little peon scamming people. Your money that you send them, you people that are just new to this, you guys are victims of sending somebody money so they can continue on with their gambling degenerate lifestyle. He's not known all over the world. He's not known anywhere. He's, he's an online YouTuber playing on his laptop in a rented condo in a dusty little part of Vegas where he's walking around having his wife push a stroller. I mean, that's not a fun life, and I don't know who would enjoy that. I mean, if I was a professional gambler, I think it would be too stressful to just keep doing YouTube videos because you're like, you know, it's stressful enough gambling. Doing it for a living, couldn't even imagine it. And, and like I said... You're doing it like he's doing it where he has to con people. That's even double um, stressful. So just remember the stress you bring on to yourself. He talked about his mother died from stress, you know, whether it was cancer or whatnot. I'm not here to make fun and, and say anything. That's not where this is going. But gambling is stressful. Gambling is not a better way of living. Like I said, if you guys like to do it for entertainment, you guys have a little system that you make money, you like to go. I'm not dogging you guys. That's who doesn't like to go. I would. We used to go all the time with friends and family, and I still go. But I guarantee you, I don't give them anything where they're getting rich off of me. You know, by the time I get my free meal or a room or enough alcohol or drinks or whatever comp stuff I can get. It's probably going to be a wash. Okay, so you can, you can take it for what it's worth, but I'm just saying these videos of him where he's losing this money, $10,000 loss to him was a huge, huge monstrous loss. You don't recover from something like that. He, he says they allotted something, but he doesn't tell you when. He doesn't show you the history. He doesn't show you the tickets. He doesn't show you anything, but what you guys stay tuned and keep watching. I got a few people in his inner circle. They, they give me information. I'm going to release some. Just some of the things that goes on in there. Just some of the things that they say and do. I uh, I got to be careful. I, I uh, Christopher, I know a bunch of people. They've given me so many, so much information. They, they think you're a joke. The only reason they I keep them anonymous is because they don't want to get kicked out because they paid. And at this time, you're just an SS show. And they enjoy the humor. You know, they know they got scammed. They're pissed off. You wonder why people aren't participating anymore? Because they're pissed off. You have tons of people pissed off. So, I mean, when you kick people out, you know, trust me, they're, they come forward. I've heard, I've got, I've, I've talked to three. And, uh, again, I'll, uh, I'll release some things that goes on in there. I'm going to give you y'all's, I'm telling you, I love this game. I strictly love this game. 
you know, it, it opened up at 12, 12 and a half. I think today it's at 13. I, I love this game. You got Houston Texans coming off a big blowout win against Jacksonville, Urban Meyer, Trevor Lawrence. Okay. You got Tyrod Taylor running the show. Played exceptionally well. Game managed well. And they beat a really, really bad Jacksonville Jaguar team. I'm shocked. Ja Jacksonville, y'all ready for a long season. Maybe Trevor can get it together. He's a winner. Urban Meyer, I'm not impressed with that in game one. I think he made a lot of poor decisions. I don't think he I don't think he gave Trevor the throws that he needed to throw to get his confidence going early. Um I'm going to tell you, and Cleveland, who played Kansas City tough, 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 tough in Arrowhead, could have easily won that game. It went back and forth. Mahomes and then pulled it out at the end. Cleveland at home is the win. Cleveland to win by double digits against the Texans. I, I really, I really like this game. I, I mean, if I was starring this game, put it this way, if I was my average bet like I was betting $20 on this game, I would go five times my play. So this would be a $100 play for me. Houston, uh, Cleveland Browns, my, what you could get it at between 12, 12 and a half and 13. It's Friday. It's early. It probably, it's probably going to go up more, but I like, I know that's a crazy number. I totally get that. Y'all probably leave comments. That's insane to drop, to leave 13 points. I've been playing this game teasing it down in my mega teasers 13 points so i got the browns even and i also had the uh giants plus 13 tonight so that's already a winner and i've always already had the um i've had the uh redskins plus 13 a winner and i teased the louisiana raging cajuns down my point being is if you want to tease that game with some plays that's fine if you want to play it straight up i love it I think, I really believe this game could be, if I had to put a score on this game, I would say Cleveland 42, Texans 14, 42 to 14. So, do what you guys want with it. It's not, like I said, none of these things are locks, but when I have a strong, strong play, that's it. I'm going to release it early. That doesn't mean go into your place, watch it, unless you think the line's going to move. I played it early. I played it during the Monday night game, the Thursday night game. So that's your freebie for tonight. Um, Cleveland Browns minus, let's call it 12 and a half. Let's call it 12 and a half. It could be 13. But anyways, you guys leave the comments in the thing. Do not be scammed by anybody asking you for money. Do not be scammed by Christopher Mitchell. His thing's drying up. He's got to rely on new, new, new entrance into the YouTube marketplace and online. So let's be honest, it, it, it's drying up. Anybody that's watching from his inner circle, subscribe to my channel. Leave me a comment. You know, you know, uh, there's just so many things going on in there that you, you guys are not. He's not giving you any any content. There's only so much content you can get. You know, Martingale to how many times? Play rows and columns. This is nothing new. This is stuff you could figure out figure out on your own. You can read the odds. It's no, no secrets. He hasn't invented anything. He hasn't re-engineered the wheel. The only thing he's doing now is he's getting into a sports betting thing. Look, you hear anything about Bitcoin? I'm going to give you another little advice. I'm going to say this about Bitcoin. Everybody should own cryptocurrency. Buy a little bit of it. I'm not saying go out and buy one Bitcoin. Buy fractional shares, keep averaging into Bitcoin. You're going to be very, very happy you bought Bitcoin in the next five years. Okay, that's going to be another a bone I'm throwing you. It's not something, oh, it fell down to 36,000. It fell down to 34,000. It fell down to 30,000. It went up to 47,000. It's all over the place. But I'm just saying, it's a supply and demand thing. Get in on it. Do not stress over it. Do not buy it if you're not if you're not geared for volatility. It's very volatile, but um, don't trade it. Don't leverage it. Buy it, hold it, keep it, and then when it goes up and it goes goes up over seventy five, eighty thousand, you're going to be very, very happy. At one time, we had it at nine thousand in our household. 
um, not me personally, but um, I'm just saying, I, I just got into crypto the last three months. Every, all these younger people were doing crypto and I just shook my head and, and told them they were fools. And now I'm a firm believer that it's gonna be a real currency. It's not gonna be zero and invest what you'd like, put something small into it, but get into crypto, get into Bitcoin or Ethereum, and put a little money in Doge. And that's all I got to say. And please subscribe, like the video if you have, if you would. If you didn't like it, then dislike it. Uh, do whatever you like. Guys, I appreciate all y'all's support. Have a great Friday. Invest in yourself and take care of yourself. Be safe, and I'll talk to you all in the next video.